right, I'm here with Isabella from Aries Games, and we are going to be talking about a couple of your new releases. Starting with what I'm most excited about, which is definitely Hunt for the Ring, uh, because I love War of the Ring. <laughs> Good, yeah, well, and we I feel like we waited so long on production, we announced it really early on, and so I'm so glad it's finally here. Yeah. Yeah, so um, in Hunt for the Ring, it is uh, two to five players, mm -hmm. and so one player is going to be Frodo, and the other one to four players, they're going to be playing the Nazgul, mm -hmm. and the Nazgul are all working together, trying to corrupt Frodo, of course, and they're obstructing his, his journey to Bree. Then you flip the board over, and then it's the journey to Rivendale. So two parts of the game. Okay. Um, they're weighted a little bit differently. The actions of what happens on your journey to Bree that will affect what happens on your journey to Rivendale. Okay, so and, there's like a midpoint where you stop and yeah. evaluate what's happening. Yeah. Specific, um, one of the big things you're going to evaluate is kind of the corruption level. If um, the Nazgul did um, however well, if they reach a certain point, they get to invite the Nazgul Lord to join them. Because when the board flips, we're going to invite Gandalf to help Frodo. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is um, Gandalf is now going to be... Um, Frodo is now being compelled by the ring like he is in the story. Mm -hmm. And so he moves kind of automated. He has um, cards that are kind of moving him forward. While Gan that player who was playing Frodo, now that player is playing Gandalf. And, it, and your goal has switched a little bit in that um, now you're working as hard as you can to kind of lure the Nazgul away while Frodo is being compelled by the ring and moving forward to Rivendale. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And then uh, the Nazgul, depending on how well they corrupted, they may have special abilities, new new actions. Yeah. And, and as, as I understand, it's a kind of a hidden movement game? Yes. Yeah. 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 So Frodo, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. Frodo is moving completely <laughs> hidden. Um, he's like, he has a little guard. It's move, his movements are secret, and then the Nazgul are moving publicly, talking over the table, um, doing doing their best with the limited resources they have to figure out where Frodo is. Okay. They can ask him certain questions, um, that kind of based on the dice roll that they mm -hmm. that they that they roll, which will reveal. Oh, so they can about. actually ask some information that they have to give to try to deduce the location. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so interesting. Yeah, get very, a little bit, a little bit sneaky. <laughs> you said based on dice roll. So is it a similar? So, thing? so, so the dice roll kind of act as a currency. The dice roll represents the different actions that the Nazgul can take. Mm -hmm. And so, depending on what they roll, it kind of um, each time it's their turn, um, they get to choose one of their actions via the dice roll. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So similar to War of the Ring in that aspect. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And then I I read somewhere that you can take the results of a game of Hunt for the Ring and then use it to modify the setup for War of the Ring? Okay, so I haven't tried this yet. I don't okay. really know how it works, but but it's, it's the same it's the same trio of authors and like they're they're like so they're really smart and they're really into the theme. Yeah, yeah. So so I believe so. Honestly though, I don't I don't know how you it works. Tried it yet, I yeah. yeah, I don't know how it works. Oh uh, no worries. Yeah. Um oh, it's awesome. I'm really yeah, excited no, about it that is one. exciting. Yeah, I'm glad it's finally out. Yeah. And it's like it's like literally it's like fresh off the boat. It'll be in stores in like like one to three weeks, depending on okay. how fast distributors get it into shops. Okay. It's literally getting getting over here. Now. Hot off the presses, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. What's the next one you wanted to talk okay, about? Okay, so Divinity Derby was a Kickstarter we had earlier this year. And so it's another one we kind of released a long, or announced a long time ago, and it's finally here. Mm -hmm. You, um, This is a lot. This is a little bit lighter than Hunt for the Ring. Sure. Um, it's uh, three to six players, and you can, it's more social, a little, but maybe, maybe if you, it could be a better family game. Basically, you play a god, and you've come to join your other god friends and Zeus, and you guys are all having dinner. On Mount Olympus, but after after dinner and drinks and dessert, you decide that you should be taking bets on the mythical, the mythical creatures flying around Mount Olympus. Okay. So it's so it's a betting game and it's a racing game. Okay. So um, you have a shared card me mechanic. So if three of us are playing. Mm -hmm. You and I are going to share a card, and you and I are sharing cards. But I don't know what you guys are sharing. Mm -hmm. So we all have kind of imperfect information that we get to use um, to make our bets. Okay. So um, we're each going to make two bets before the racing begins. Then we're going to start racing. Um, we get a move for the creatures that we want based on our kind of our limited information mm -hmm. cards. Um, halfway through the game, we're going to have another round of betting, and then we're going to after after the first creatures made it through, we're going to rank up, see how all the creatures did. However, they may or, they may have been mythical creatures playing dirty tricks, which um, some cards allow you to like cheat a little bit. Sure. Yeah, as, as these creatures are known to do. And so Zeus may or may not have been watching. So basically you're going to shuffle some cards together and find out if Zeus was protecting that character 
where Zeus reveals that character, that's going to ch- change the the stats of the race. Okay. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of a free for all at the end. You don't know exactly what's going to happen, but then everybody reveals their bets, um, counts up the victory points, three races in a game. Okay, great. And that's uh, you said a lighter game, uh, kind of in the hour, hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. If 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 not less, yeah. Okay. Well, I would say well, I'd say I'd say a little over an hour if you're going to play all mm-hmm. six players. Okay, yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. And so that's yeah, that's a lot of a lot of fun for like a quick, uh, simpler game. Okay. And then I'm super excited. This is probably my favorite out of the three. I don't know because <laughs> last Friday was my favorite release from us last year. Okay. So um, and if if you don't know what that game is, it's um, there's a demon or the, I'm sorry, there's a maniac um, terrorizing Camp Apache. Four chapters to the game. Every time the chapter changes a little bit, but sometimes the maniac is hunting the camper. Sometimes the camper is hunting the maniac. But in this game. We invite another villain, and that's okay. of course a very familiar looking hands. <laughs> this um, this villain enters your dreams at night, and uh, enters your dreams and causes terror. He's, he's a demon, an unnamed demon. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, in this game, it adds another chapter, but um, instead of where it was sometimes the demon, um, sometimes the maniac chasing the campers and back and forth, we can do like a round robin situation now, where it's like. The demon is hunting the maniac who's hunting the campers and it's this extended terror situation okay and yeah. I haven't played the original are those all characters people are controlling so like yeah someone yeah. is the maniac yeah so um, so in, in the original game so you have um, one to five people controlling all of the campers and then one player controlling um, the maniac the maniac is moving secretly um, he's got the shield you never know exactly where he is um, where, where how close he is to the campers well, the campers are all working together, collecting clues, talking over the table, and trying to figure out um, where the demon is, either so that they can they can run from him or so they can kill him, depending on the chapter. Sure. Yeah. Um, and halfway through the game, the demon, or I'm sorry, the maniac will die, and whoever was responsible for the for the maniac's death, that player is now the chosen one. And so, when the maniac comes back to life, it's their destiny to, uh, or the maniac now wants to see. Is must seek revenge on the chosen okay. one. Yeah. So in order to in order for the campers to win, they have to fill destiny and, and help the chosen one kill them kill the demon or yeah kill the maniac once and for all, or the maniac is the winner by killing the chosen one. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, so that's expansion for last Friday, and uh, are those two games Divinity Derby and this expansion? Uh, are they recent releases as well? Yeah, all all of this. Um, this came out end of, end of the month, end of October around Halloween, and then um, Hunt for the Ring and Divinity Derby. Those are like just hitting stores in the next week or so. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Well, thanks for talking about, with me about these games. They look really exciting. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Thank you very much.